Hi everyone, I just bought this new power supply. It's an Eventech DC variable power supply. Apparently it output up to 30 volts and 10 amps, which is amazing if you actually can. So as you can see, it's 76 pounds, but I managed to get it with an eight pound voucher just over just about 68 quid i paid for it there are some cheaper ones on, on amazon but this one had four and a half star reviews and it had 316 people that purchased it so i thought you know it probably be a very good purchase apparently it's fcc certified so that's good for me and they come it comes with 12 months guarantee so i'm very happy with that i haven't opened it yet but i am hopeful that it comes with the banana clips because i don't own any yet i like the fact that they showed the inside of it which was nice Here's the specification. So like I said, zero to 30 volts. Apparently they can, it can do an accuracy of 0 0.1 volts and 0 0.01 amps, which is nice. I don't know what overall efficiency means is 89%. Uh, oh yeah, there is. So display voltage 0 0.1. Oh, current is actually 0 0.1 amps as well. Okay. It's got a cooling fan, which I hope isn't too loud. It says it's an intelligent temperature control fan. 3.2 pounds. Being English, I have no idea how heavy 3.2 pounds is. I've actually just seen this answer here about someone saying, so someone asked, are the supply needs up to providing the full 10 amp output or would I need to buy more heavy duty ones? The supplied leads would probably do however they are not crimped particularly well. I would recommend using some decent silicon leads if you want to minimize voltage drops. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind that I'll make sure I'll purchase some. This is the picture that made me purchase it. It looks like a nice small unit, so very happy with that. And yeah, the reviews are fantastic, literally. What I like as well is you've got reviews from 2017, 2018, 2020. It's consistent. And you've got a bunch of international reviews as well. That, so that makes me very happy. Cool. Okay, so let's get started. Let's on, let's jump in and unbox unbox it. I've never had a power, D, DC power supply before, and I've used it a bunch of times at university. I say a bunch, like a handful of times. So I don't know what I'm doing. We're not going to do any real load testing, I don't think. But we'll unbox it, see what it is, and I'll just give you my opinions on it. Okay, so here's the Eventech KPS3010D uh, DC variable power supply. Apparently it can output up to 30 volts and 10 amps. I've never heard of Eventech before, no idea, no idea who they are. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's a Chinese brand. Wang, Wang Ye Technological Park, Shenzhen. It's a Chinese brand. Apparently it's FCC certified, which is good. Oh, the box is quite nice. So, like I said, I got this on Amazon for 70 pounds. So let's see. UK power cable. It's come in stand. Oh, it's tiny. I was expecting it to be a lot bigger. Nice manual. I don't usually read manuals. Probably I won't read this one either. I was gonna say I was, I was going to, but and that's it. So I'm very glad I got these. I thought I was gonna get the ones that you push into the power supply. Don't see how these. What well, I was thinking, I'll show you. Can't remember, I don't know what can't remember what they're called, but the ones that go into there. Maybe these do. I don't know. All right, so that's the box. I'm surprised by how small the power supply is. It's tiny, which is nice. Let's, let's see what I don't have to actually rip it. Yeah, ripped it for no reason. Look at that. That's literally tiny. Let's do can I So look at that, my, compared to my hand, I've got a very small hand as well. Let's see what I could compare it to. Um okay, we'll compare it to the iPad. So here I've got an iPad 2018. In terms of size. Literally about the size of an iPad, even smaller. Which is amazing, really. Too happy with that, because the ones that I had at, the ones that I have at university, they're super big. It feels, it actually feels like it's good quality. It's got standard screws, so I can easily open it up, which is cool. Because I'm sure that most electronics people are gonna wanna open this. Input voltage, nice big space for the fan. There's no like cooling holes on the on the sides, which are surprised about some here. Yeah. So what do we have? We got on off. Fine course. Okay, cool. So at to control current, I assume quickly, and then finitely, and then same with voltage. Nice and simple. 
Okay, let's plug it in and turn it on. Well, that's a nice display. I can hear the fan a little bit. That display is nice. I was not expecting that display to be that nice. Look at that. So it makes a slight buzzing sound. It actually has... It's got a smell, but it's like a new, it's like a new item smell. I think that's just the fans kicking on. All right, let's connect it up to a breadboard and see how it does. Yeah, two of the exact same, right? You know what? It might be a good idea to read the manual. <laughs> okay, let's read the manual. So, blah, 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 uh, protective grounding, nice. Uh, on, off. I can't see that symbol, protective grounding. Okay. Voltage display, current display, CV display, rough current regulation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. In order to come over the power supply ready, take the following steps. Complete all connections, connect the power cord attached to the equipment. In the rear panel, insert the power cord, blah, blah, blah. Push the power button on the front panel and power. Okay. How to solve the power on failure. All right. Cleaning. I doubt I'll be cleaning this thing. Um, what I want, well, I'm sh I think we're going to German now. Yeah, well, if that's not German, I apologize, but it looks like it could be. Dutch. It's Dutch. I missed it. Okay. So, where does it say how insula insulation system, open equipment packaging, check whether all materials listed in standard accessories have been received. Meanwhile, check whether all other accessories ordered together. Okay, yep. Yeah. Complete all connections. Cheers. This is why I don't read manuals. This is why, because it says complete all connections. Whatever, okay. Okay, so that on there. Okay, so I don't even know what would be the best way to test this, but let's just power some stuff and see what happens. I need like a header. Okay, cool. And then so, Cool, okay. What? I made a recent video about how I'm really unhappy with these resistors, so I'd like to burn them out and then get some new ones. Let's use these 220 ones. Chuck them in series. Okay, and another one. So let's turn it on and then I don't know what settings it's gonna go straight to. Okay, zero volts, zero amps, cool. I'm glad it didn't just start off at like 12 volts. All right, so we wanna crank up volts, right? We do it fine. Nope. Nope. Okay, just gone to 3.6 volts. And there's a buzzing sound. I don't know if you can, you probably can't hear that because currently it's pouring down with rain. And this is what happens when you live in the northern parts of Britain. It rains all year. Okay, so there's like a slight buzzing humming sound. It's not too annoying. You might not even be able to hear it. Okay, and the resistors are fine. Let's just see. So it says 3.6 volts and then amps. I'm going to turn up the current. Okay, it's going to 3.7 volts, 3.8 volts. Okay. This isn't doing anything. 3.8 volts again. Okay. 0 0.1 amps. It's going to dump straight to 8 volts. Eight point six. Okay. So I assume just like this, but the the dial actually stops. Like it's not. I thought it would just spin all the way around, but it doesn't. So you've just got a choice between basically off, so to the left off, and then far to the right on. Okay. So I assume that means that if I put the motor about halfway, then I should get what fifteen volts and five amps, right? I'm at 12 volts now. Can you see my resistors? Sir? They're not burning out yet. So I'm at 11.9 volts and then so crank it up 12.8, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 22, 23, 
They give us 29.8 votes. And then, but apparently I've rounded off to 31.5 votes. Okay. And then current, I can't increase it anymore. But that's obviously because of my circuit. Take it all the way down to two volts. Well, okay. Wow. The resistors are hot. They're not burning or anything, but they're hot. Let's do voltage across it. 0 0.03 volts right now, right? Five volts currently. So 5.1, 5.1. That's spot on. That's nice. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of expecting it to be a, a, quite a bit off actually. So we got 8.3 volts across them. 8.3. Nice. So as I'm increasing it, I am getting uh, the hissing, the buzzing sound is getting a bit more. Let me try and see if I can get you to hear it. One second. Okay. Yeah, I, I doubt it. So I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Let's see, is the actual power supply itself? There's literally no heat on the power supply, which is nice. Okay, so we're at 12.6 volts now. Let's see how accurate it is. 12.59, very good. I'm super happy with that. Okay. So 17 volts now. Sixteen point nine. I'm super pleased with that. I don't think I'm going. To, I'm not going to be doing much with thirty volts. Sensitivity twenty eight point four volts. Not bad. And then thirty one point five. Thirty one point five. Nice. And now, oof! The resistors are hot. I'm intrigued. I wonder if they're going to set a light. I mean, to touch them. Ah, yeah, basket. That is hot. Cool. Well, I think I've demonstrated my point, which is that the power supply works, which is nice. Super happy about that. And I'm super happy that it came with these and it just uh, has the clamp connected onto there, which is cool. Anyways, cool. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed the unboxing. Sorry, I couldn't actually do any sort of load testing or serious stuff. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. This is my first power supply. But I do plan on buying some more. And whenever I buy a new instrument, I'll do an unboxing for it as well. Thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. And link to this is in the description as well. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.